Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're taking a look at PlayStation emulation on PC using DuckStation. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, most people are familiar with DuckStation on PC using RetroArch because it has its own designated core. But what if I told you there was a standalone DuckStation program? That's the one we're gonna take a look at. Now, DuckStation is currently available on Linux and Windows. If you have a Mac, you will be out of luck. And for the purposes of this video, I am installing it on a Windows PC. To download DuckStation, you will need to navigate to this GitHub page. You can use the link above me or just click on the link in the description below. Once you are here, scroll down to where it says DuckStation Windows x64 release.zip and click on it. It's about 18 megabytes. Now for this emulator to work, you will need to provide your own BIOS files. And this is a bit of a pain, but if you are curious on what exactly BIOS files look like, I'll leave a link to this page in the description below. It's a very good reference site. Once you've downloaded DuckStation, feel free to extract it into its own folder. Once you've extracted DuckStation, you'll notice there's two different applications. One that says no GUI and one that says QT. And there's a bit of a difference here. The no GUI version has menus that are very similar to an Android app. Take a look at the settings menu, for example, and you can see toggles for on and off, and then icons on the top for other menus. Whereas the QT version has menus that are very similar to other Windows emulators, and for the purposes of this video, I will be looking at the QT version. I just find it a little bit more straightforward and easy to use. But at the end of the day, just feel free to use whatever version floats your boat. Since we've already got the settings menu open, let's just take a look at it right now. And we'll start out with the general settings. You don't really need to change anything here if you don't want to. But if you're a little bit confused as to what some of these options are, just hold your mouse over it and a description will pop up below. On the BIOS settings tab, click the browse button under BIOS directory, and this is where you have to extract your BIOS files to. Once your BIOS files are where they should be, just click refresh list and then you can leave this on auto detect or you can manually select the BIOS file you want to use. In the console settings, you don't need to change anything here either, but they do have some interesting settings like read speed up. In the emulation settings, the one thing I recommend checking out is the rewind run ahead feature. If you have a beefy CPU, then check out enable rewinding. If you enable this, then you have the ability to rewind your games instead of relying on save states. If your system can't handle this, don't worry, just uncheck it and you'll be absolutely fine. In the game list settings, specify where your games are located. If you have a directory full of PlayStation games, just add it here. It will ask you if you'd like to scan recursively. Now, this is helpful if you have games in a bunch of different subfolders, like I usually do. So DuckStation will just scan all of those folders and add them to your library. In the controller settings, this is where you set up your controller. If you're using keyboard, great. If you're using a controller, great. Just make sure the keys correspond with what you want. All you have to do to set it up is click on the button here and then press the corresponding button you want to use. Now, if for some reason your bindings aren't working on your controller, just make sure it's in player one. Right now I have an 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 plugged into my PC. It's reading as player two and it's not picking up on DuckStation. Sometimes you might need to reboot your PC in order to assign your controller back to player one. And once you do that, it should pick up everything absolutely fine. You can see the 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 is now registering. Another friendly tip here is it is set to digital controller by default. If you're using games that require a DualShock controller, just click on Analog Controller DualShock, and this will give you the extra buttons you require. On top of that, if you want to use Auto Fire, it does have that option as well. Now for the hotkey settings. I decided to do this one after the controller settings just to make sure your controller is set up perfectly. Once it is, open up the hotkey settings and designate some specific buttons for some specific actions. These are completely up to you, but they are very handy. And the ones I do recommend checking out are the rewind feature if you are using it, and also the save states. In the memory card settings, by default, it's set to separate card per game, and you can just leave it like that if you want, or you can just change it to shared between all games. I do recommend just keeping it as is. In the display settings, if you're having issues running PlayStation 1 games, you can tinker around with things here, and it might help considerably. By default, mine is set to Hardware Direct3D 11. I can change this to Direct3D 12, Vulkan, OpenGL, or Software. And this will largely depend on your video card and your system settings. So just check out one of them, and then if that doesn't work, try another. Additionally, if you're having issues, check your adapter, and you can force it to use your video card if you want. There are some other settings here, like VSync and Optimal Frame Pacing you can check out, but I'd first see how your games are running, and then dabble in this stuff. 
Some of it might make your games better and might give you an overall better experience, but I'd first just check to see if those games are working in the first place. In the enhancement settings, this is where you can really have some fun if you want to make things look a heck of a lot better. Well, by default, it's set to internal resolution scale of one times, but if you want to crank it up completely, you absolutely can. You can get 4K here. But again, just a friendly reminder, the more you crank this up, the more your system is going to be used. If you don't have a powerful system, it might struggle the more you crank up the internal resolution scale. For multi-sample anti-aliasing, it's disabled by default. If you want to try some different settings here, you absolutely can. At the end of the day, these will be your own personal preference, and that goes for texture filtering as well. By default, it's set to nearest neighbor, but you can set it to bilinear and see how it works for you. Now, if you are running into some performance issues, and if you haven't cranked the internal resolution scale, I'd recommend checking the software renderer readbacks. If you check this off, it might help out some performance. For the audio settings, you shouldn't really have to change anything here, but if you are running into some issues, try changing the backend to SDL and also uncheck resampling. Now, the last thing I'll go over in the settings menu are the achievement settings. By default, it is set to off and you don't need to enable it if you don't want to. I don't normally enable this stuff on mine, but you can if you're into achievements. You will need a retro achievements account and I'll go over that in a separate video altogether. But all you have to do here is just click login and log into your account. Now moving on to the games list that we just imported and I can see a couple of issues. First and foremost, it didn't import any games that I had zipped. If you do have zip games for DuckStation on PC, you will have to unzip them and then DuckStation will read them. The second thing here is it imported a bunch of games that aren't PlayStation games at all. We have some Nintendo games. I don't remember the Wind Waker ever being released on PlayStation. And this here, Street Fighter EX3, that's a PS2 game. So to remove these games, all you have to do is right click and then go down to exclude from list and that'll get rid of them. Once you've cleaned up your list here, if you still had some games that were zipped and now you've unzipped them so DuckStation will see them, just go back to settings and then click scan for new games. And this should bring those games back into this list. Now, before I launch my game, if you are familiar with emulators and you have experience and you know what you're doing and you feel like tinkering around with things even more, just right click on the game, go to properties and you can adjust things on a per game basis. And there are some settings in here that will help you tweak your emulation. But aside from that, we're pretty much good to go. You can go on ahead and play your game. Just right click on the game you want to play and then click either default boot, fast boot or full boot. It's completely up to you. And just like that, you can see my game is up and running. And you can also see there's a new option here that says cheats. You can go on ahead and click on it. Go to cheat manager and that should bring up a cheat menu with pre-populated cheats. You can enable them if you want. Now I'm a huge fan of DuckStation. It keeps getting better and better and I'm hoping soon you won't have to provide your own BIOS file either. It's amazing on Android and I do have a tutorial video on that. I'll leave it in the description below. But anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on DuckStation in the comments below. And if there's another emulator you want me to take a look at, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.